Okay. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Surani. I work for UNICEF in Kenya. I head the behavior and social change team. Uh, I'm so happy to be part of this training uh, and also to share some information and experiences from Kenya. Uh, we don't claim to know everything. We are trying to do some things in terms of tracking uh, what is being said about areas that we are interested in. Uh, we are also in the process of learning quite a lot, and I'm sure even the training itself is going to provide us with a lot more experience and information on how to handle this area of work. So uh, my presentation is just going to talk about the areas of misinformation or disinformation, and also touch on the fact that there is no information also going out to some communities in the country. So looking at these areas. Uh, I'd like to share some of the uh, things that we are doing, so not much in terms of theory, but more in terms of trying to figure out uh, to share some of our experiences. So uh, how are we uh, handling this whole rumor management area? It's a fairly new area for us. Uh, we've been doing some work in this area for some pro programs like the immunization programs when we introduced uh, new vaccines, we had to track some of the rumors that were going on, and we had to also see what uh, what was being said. Particularly, we had uh, areas of uh, uh, interest that we uh, had to really track on when we were launching the HPV vaccine. Uh, we had to deal with a lot of rumors, a lot of engagement on this whole area of uh, HPV because of the target audience that we were selecting uh, to uh, be vaccinated, girls that were 10 uh, years old. Uh, so these are some of the areas that we had to deal with. So, um, you know, um, we, uh, some of us actually come from an era where we had to write a letter to get information out to a friend or and wait for that letter to be responded to. But nowadays you take, you're so connected with everyone and in every place. So this area, and this is very uh, prominent in Kenya because of the media literacy being quite high. Access to uh, networks is quite high. Uh, access to devices is quite high. So because of that, information moves very quickly and unless uh, it, ca it can be, or and misinformation also moves very quickly or even faster. So, uh, and we've realized that unless you are on the ball and able to, to be connected to these networks, we are going to be left behind. And there's lots of conversations that are going to happen uh, that will damage whatever we are working on. So uh, what are we doing right now uh, and how are we doing it? Uh, so basically what we have done so far is we've looked at the sources of information. Uh, we have selected the channels and platforms which are relevant to us. Uh, we are looking at the different monitoring tools that we can use, select the, uh, you know, and figuring out what are we going to be monitoring as well. And then uh, the inclusion of the keywords, you know, the switch, the search queries. Uh, what are the words that we have to uh, put into our search uh, monitoring uh, exercises so that we are able to track conversations? So and this keeps evolving on a on an almost daily basis, where we have to keep changing or adding more new words as uh, things keep coming up. What are we tracking here in Kenya? We're tracking questions. We are trying to answer questions that are coming up from the public, from different groups, queries that they have, concerns. We're trying to address those concerns that people raise, complaints of systems that are not working, things that they can't access, things they can't get, uh, and also looking at what suggestions people are making. So these are some of the areas that we are tracking. The different platforms, of course, is uh, I think it's not different from many of the countries that are working in this area. Uh, all the social media platforms, uh, the mass media platforms, and also one of the other areas that we are really 
putting a lot of emphasis and effort on is the community engagement platforms. So we're using community radio and also the community interactions to get uh, feedback and information directly from the communities itself. So why are we doing this? We have to figure out whether the uh, information that is floating around is either fake or whether it's factual. So we're trying to identify rumors to track false information or misinformation and disinformation uh, to track search trends. What are people uh, trying to get information on? What are the areas that people are interested in? What are the search trends? Uh, uh, how are the search trends evolving? And to identify who uh, are, who could be influencers. So uh, this is very key. Uh, and uh, this is not only in terms of influencers, in terms of sites or platforms, but also in terms of people who could uh, be used to influence or people we need to keep an eye on who are actually generating disinformation. We had this um, group of uh, 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 people in Kenya who uh, brought on a lot of heartache and headache to the health system when we were introducing vaccines or uh, like uh, tetanus um, and even vaccines like HPV. Uh, and we had to engage with them initially. We thought, okay, let's them talk and let's ignore it. It might go away type of syndrome. But then later we realized that that's not possible, that we have to engage with them. We dug into their groups to figure out how big their groups were. Uh, and we realized that it's actually not very many people. It's just that they had a very catchy name to their group, which brought on a lot more connotations to it. Uh, and so we had to really engage with them. We brought them to the table, we discussed with them, we gave them facts and information. And uh, <clears throat> then, I mean, basically tried to uh, use that group to actually um, uh, initially just to stop talking about uh, the misinformation and the disinformation that they were um, uh, propagating, but also to nullify some of the information that they were providing to the public. So let me now just go straight into sharing some of the experiences or some of the things that we're doing here in Kenya. Uh, I spoke about community radio, the use of community radio. And this is something that we are now putting a lot of emphasis and focus on because that is one of the closest mediums uh, to the communities. And uh, we are seeing the power of community radio here in Kenya. So the goal of this program was to introduce two-way risk communication and community engagement to contribute towards the prevention uh, of COVID or the control of COVID in Kenya. So we started working on this uh, uh, fairly recently. Uh, the purpose of this assignment was to engage Kenyans in a two-way dialogue, basically, uh, and to get feedback from the communities and to give them information in return as well. It was implemented over a period of 12 weeks uh, in 37 community radio stations, which covered about 30 counties in the country. We were able to reach about a 13 million in terms of audience on this project. Uh, we uh, were supported in this project by USAID uh, funding, and uh, um, uh, we worked very closely with the Ministry of Health to implement this uh, project. Uh, in terms of gathering uh, community feedback, uh, we looked at what their fears were, what their concerns were, and tried to get information around these areas. We created a rumor log or a myth log to try and log whatever misinformation or rumors that kept coming up in conversations on the radio uh, platforms. Uh, and we logged it in terms of different areas so that it's easy for us to then address these uh, in misinformation or issues in uh, our communication efforts. We, the, the, this log also helped us to see which, is the, which are the things that we don't actually address or which are the things that we sandwich with other information or which are the things that we take the bull by the horn type of thing and address directly. We then also um, uh, started working on another project uh, with uh, an organization known as Africa's Voices Foundation, and where we looked at using SMS and again radio 
to engage and get feedback from communities. So uh, this uh, project looks at listening to citizens, uh, you know, in terms of uh, what is, uh, and then look, uh, providing them with information on a uh, real-time basis in terms of the questions that they have. So it was a very interactive uh, uh, um, uh, initiative with the audiences. The interactive radio basically uh, was coupled with a two-way SMS communication. So in collaboration with Radio Africa, which was uh, which is one of the uh, big radio uh, organizations in the country, uh, we aired uh, PSAs, uh, public service announcements, and there was also this interactive radio show that we did uh, where we got, uh, it was a live radio show where we got uh, high quality public health uh, content was provided. And also we had speakers who came on to the radio shows. We had people who were calling in directly to the radio show. And we also had people who were sent us SMS uh, on the SMS platform. Uh, basically, one of the main things was to establish a trusted communication space uh, so that we could get social insights. Uh, so, so the sh shows were broadcasted nationwide in Swahili and we reached an approximately 5 million uh, plus li listeners through this radio uh, platform. Uh, basically, uh, some of the interesting things uh, in this uh, um, uh, project was the shows featured expert guests focusing on priority issues uh, derived from the messages that we got. Uh, so depending on the types of SMS that we received, we also coined the um, show to address the issues that uh, that was more prominently coming up in the SMS discussions. Uh, the, I mean, in terms of uh, participation, we had about 68% of the respondents to the SMS queries and questions were men, uh, less so in terms of women who sent us SMS onto the platform. Um, AVF has uh, uh, their own uh, platform, which is uh, called uh, Kati Kati, a unique platform, which basically is able to communicate, um, uh, one, uh, to, uh, to provide one-to-one -one communications, uh, which is basically uh, humans responding to the questions. So this was very key, it was not a bot or it was not, a, but it was more in terms of actually looking at what your question was. We have a answer protocol that has been done and based on the answers protocol, uh, SMSs were being responded to individually. So people really felt that, you know, it was their message, their question that was being answered. Uh, citizen, uh, then uh, one of the other areas that we also looked at was, uh, you know, uh, what were the priorities of the communities? What were they talking about? Uh, are they, do they need more information on things like symptoms, depending on the number of SMS or the questions that come into the shows? Or is it more information on treatment or the number of cases in Kenya? They're worried about that, uh, the government's response. Uh, and then also one of the key components was to address myths and misconceptions. So this was all the, even in this project, we had the myth and uh, rumor log so that we can log it and make sure that these are addressed in different platforms and different ways. The other uh, thing that I would like to share is the National Call Center. Uh, through a fantastic collaboration with uh, one of Kenya's largest mobile service providers, Safaricom, uh, where they uh, provided uh, free, um, uh, technical support and uh, uh, I mean it was basically something that we didn't have to put any money into. The Safaricom managed and handled the whole thing for us. Uh, we established a national call center and uh, this was also used not only to interact with the public but also to get information back from the public. If you look at some of the data that we had, you know we had an IVR, integrated voice response, uh, where we had uh, people dialing into this. I mean, more than, this is just for a particular month, we had more than 3 million people who dialed into the IVR. Uh, then there is also an IVR self-service uh, menu. You, uh, we had more than 2 million people dialing into that. 
uh, the US US SD call service. Again, we had, I mean, a huge, huge amount of hits on that one. Uh, Suri is an interactive platform uh, that uh, responds to a chat and uh, people not as much as we expected, but people do uh, did interact with them. Uh, and of course, the number of calls that come in uh, is also fairly a large number. Uh, if, if the difference between calls offered and calls answered is the calls that get disconnected or people disconnect uh, before uh, being answered or responded to. Uh, again, even in this platform, uh, you can see how the uh, uh, gender um, balance is in terms of the people who call. But uh, one of the things is, you know, the nature of queries is mostly on signs and symptoms uh, when they feel that they have been exposed to risks. You know, uh, and if they're traveling, they want to get more information. They needed to get more information on testing sites and testing and, and uh, various regulations on, you know, uh, schools, uh, churches, how many people can go to church, where can we travel to? And then of course the home base care and the treatment. And then uh, we also continue to have the uh, myths and rumor log even on this platform. Then, of course, we have the normal social media tracking as well. We have huge amount of engagement on our social media platforms. Uh, you can see the um, conversations that are going on, the engagement uh, of people. And of course, this engagement kept changing uh, based on the issues that were more pertinent. The moment, say, for example, the vaccine discussion came, Pfizer uh, uh, vaccine conversation came, the engagement kept increasing. Uh, there were other issues in the country, then the moment that comes up, then there's more engagement happening at that time. So there was quite a lot of uh, um, uh, interaction on our different social media platforms. Uh, of course, on this slide, you can see the number of uh, uh, platforms and how uh, these platforms feature in terms of the conversations that are going on. Uh, again, even through uh, social media monitoring, we had we are using different uh, methodologies. We are using Talkwalker. We are using um, uh, Ipsos uh, research, uh, different organizations to actually monitor the conversations and then also to pick out the rumors that keep coming up. So these are some of the things that we log in terms of you know the type of engagements that are happening. Uh, we'll log uh, and um, identify search trends uh, to see what are people looking for in terms of information uh, and all that. Then there is also some debunking of myths that happens, you know, in terms of the different fact checkers that are there. Uh, but I must confess that we're not doing this well enough. We're more debunking on our social media platforms than using the fact checkers itself. So this is an area that we would want to concentrate a little more on as we now start working on the COVID vaccine introduction next year and all that. So this is something that we really want to uh, improve in terms of our areas of work. Uh, this brings me to the end of the presentation, mm -hmm. but one thing that we really need to see is and sift through is are we actually contributing to this information overload? How can we tailor our communication and uh, uh, filter it in a way that we are not part of the problem in terms of providing too much information on too many platforms? Or, or is there something that is that says that there is too much information if the information is the right information. So that brings me to the end of the presentation and thank you very much.